Hey everybody, I'm Chris Palmer, and today I'm going to show you how to make your garbage cans look good. You ever find that raccoons or those pests or any kind of big rodents are getting into your garbage cans and knocking them over? Well, I'm going to show you how to make a perfect enclosure. Here are the materials you'll need. So it's real simple. All we're going to do is build a frame that's going to enclose the two garbage cans, whether it's two garbage cans, a recycling bin, and a garbage can. Basically what we're looking for is a deck platform to put the bins on top of. Not everyone is going to have the same garbage cans, so when doing this, make sure you map it out first and change your dimensions. I'm using a 4 foot by 2 foot platform. So I've cut all my uprights at 39 and a half inches. Again, nominal to whatever size bin you're working with. I use this because it's about 3 or 4 inches higher than the bins. Now, what I've done here is I've notched my first piece of deck board that's going to be on the base to have center mounted the first upright in the middle. That will help me actually hold it in place as I go to screw it in. So with the horizontal brace going into the sides, you'll notice that the heights are different from the front to the back. That's because when I do put the lid on, I want the lid to slope so the water runs off. Now what you need to do is, you know what the height is here, you need to transfer that line onto this side so that when this comes across, we're looking at a nice 90 degree angle, keeping our whole form nice and square. It's time to move on to doing the deck on the bottom. All we're going to do is put down some deck boards all the way across, and when we get to the parts with the 2x4s, we're going to have to do some notching. So I've taken an 8 foot fence board because I have a 4 foot width, and now I've cut them in half, and I'm simply going to staple them in place. You can add screws if you like for extra security. Staples work really well, and it makes it a lot faster. The last one for the top, we're going to have to rip it because it's a little tall. So we just make a little mark at the back, take it over to the table saw, and when I make that ripped edge, I put cut and seal on it, but I always put the factory end up, so I'll have a round edge up here. Now with our final backboard in place, we can work on our sides. I'm going to cut the board to go all the way to the edge of this fence board to the front of the 2x4. That way when we install a door at the front here, we won't have any interference when it opens. So I'm going to take that measurement now and see that it is approximately 24 and 3 quarter inches. I'll double check at the bottom and make sure it's continuous. Pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and make all those cuts. Make sure all cut ends have cut and seal on them so the wood is treated and not left exposed. So we've completed our side, all we have left is this little section right here, which we will address after we build our top. So let's move on to building the lid. In order to make this lid work, it's going to have to be able to line up to these hinges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to butt two 2x4s two side by side like this and have it rotate in this direction. So what I'm going to do is cut this 2x4 to the same length as this 2x4, which is 48 inches. I'll have one for the front and one for the back, and then I'll put ribs in between to frame it all together. So when framing the lid, I want to make sure that it overhangs the fence boards that are going on the front. So what I've done is I brought my 2x4 flush to the front of a fence board offcut so that when I put it in place, I can make sure I'm at the right depth. Now all I need to do is measure up here, take this depth, and cut three ribs to frame it all together. 14 and a quarter. So now we've made the lid frame, it's time to put our fence boards on. We're going to put them all the way across, and we're even going to put a fence board right up here, so that way when we attach the hinge, they're at the same height. So now I'm just going to fasten in the top cap here for the back of the frame. So you can see here there's an overhang. I've left this to allow for the fence board that's going to come across and finish off this top edge of the skirt. I'm going to do the exact same pieces all the way across for the lid, cutting four more boards at 49 and 3 8 so now I've cut all my boards for my lid, I'm going to set everything in place, make sure they're all in line, and then screw them down. So now we're going to mount the lid using the hinges onto the frame. I like to use 6 inches as a reference because it's 48 inches and I figure it's a good number to come in. Given that this is the center line of where the hinge will fold, is across the center of the diameter, I line that up on the edge of this board. And with it all squared in place, I then go ahead and sink in my screws. Now I'll attach the hinge to the lid. 
So now our lid is complete. It's time to build the two front doors. So the hinges need to mount to the structural member here, this 2x4. So I'm going to measure between the 2x4s to get the width of the frame of the door. So my width opening for the door is 21 and a half, and the height is approximately looking at about 32 inches. Now, I would make a 21 and a half by 32 inch door if the wood was never going to stretch or expand. So what we like to do is remove about a half an inch, much like building a gate. This way, when the wood swells, it won't jam and get stuck in the opening. And we can open and close it any time of the year without any trouble. So we've got our door frames done. Now it's time to clad them in fence boards. First, let's take a look at how they fit. So with this all in place, we can see I have enough room for growth. And now just put the fence boards on there, which will be mounted from this edge to the center of that 2x4. So we'll look at about 22 and a quarter. So when creating our doors, we've got to remember there's a left-hand door and a right-hand door. And the reason we can differ between the two is because we're going to put the boards flush to the edge of whatever side door it is. So this is the right-hand side. So I'm going to create this as my right-hand door. Also, the other note is the fence board is going to end at the bottom of the 2x4. That means this is the bottom. That's how I identify it because the excess of the fence board will be up here at the top. So again, right-hand side and bottom. And we'll do the offset to create the left-hand door. Well, our doors are now complete. As you can see, they sit nicely. All we have to do is rip another little strip of fence board here, and we're going to attach one, two hinges on each door, and then I'm going to put a nice little slide bolt in there to lock it. So now it's time to cut that tricky angled piece on the side. Now that we have our lid in place, we can have a perfect guide. So the first one will go two and a half inches, and it'll run all the way back to three and seven eighths. And the width of the piece would need to be 24 and 3 quarters. So now we've made our tricky cut, a nice long rip along this angle. Snip the two ends, got the first one in place. And now all I'm going to do is screw it to the bottom half of the structure, not to the lid. Otherwise, you won't be able to open the lid. So make sure you fasten it to the 2x4 at the back. And then do the same on the other side. So now I'm going to install my fence board to act as a cover piece at the front to make sure everything looks nice and even. So we're going to mount our hinge now on the doors where we're going to go about three inches down and we're going to line the center of the pin with the edge of this ripped fence board. Once we have it in place, we simply hold it with our thumb. We can press in the first screw, get a nice little dimple. Come back to our mark again, make sure everything's lined up. By mounting it to the structure first, it allows us to mount the door that much easier. So what I've done is I've propped my door up, so that way when it does swing on the hinge, it'll actually clear the wood without rubbing. All I have to do now is align these two edges along the center and screw into the face of the board. So there's one door on. Now, time to get the second one in. So now I'm going to mount my slide bolt. I'm going to mount it right in the middle so it has equal strength on the center of the door. And all I'm going to do is mount it so it lies on the 2x4 and then I'm going to mount the catch on the other side where it needs to align into this 2x4. So our slide bolt's in place and now it's time to put in our stop bolt. The stop bolt will deactivate one of the doors. This will allow us to keep it locked. So I've drilled a hole through the side here, which transfers into the side of this 2x4. So once my stop bolt's in place, my door becomes locked, and all I have to do is slide it back out, and I get full access to the other side. And that's a wrap, folks. I hope you enjoyed building your own custom storage unit for your garbage bins to keep the pests out of here and keep your garbage from being disturbed. Make sure you put a waterproofer on this. All pressure-treated lumber should always be sealed. It helps make it last that much longer. 